respiratory, and then if the head, if the migraine, the best treatment for the migraine, mm. medical treatment, mm. is today a trip down. Okay, fine. Mapude, <laughs> thank you for holding on for so long, my dear. We're having a very, very interesting discussion here. Some controversies as well. What is your question, my dear? Hi, doctor. Um, my question is that I have an eight-year-old son. Right? Eight-year-old? Yes. Mm. He's been having headaches when he was about four. He mm. say, I have a pain on my head. And I took him to a general practitioner. And they said, a four-year cannot have a headache. Mm -hmm. Then I took him to a pediatrician. They ran tests and they said, I can take him to a hospital for, they must take blood, they must test his blood. They did that and they found out that he, had, he was allergic to pets and dust. Allergic to? Pets and dust. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. And then they prescribed medication for him. They gave him a they spray nasal neck, something like that, mm -hmm. and another medication. And the pain went away. Good. But it, it does come back sometimes. And, you know, I, I have got to take him back to the doctor and all that. They said he needed to be on chronic medication. I'm still waiting. They, they are still treating him. What is it that I can do in the meantime to assist him? What diagnosis do they make, Maput? They are treating, they, only, they, only they have told investigated. They are allergic yeah. to, to pets and, and, and dust, that's all. What? He is mm. allergic to pets and dust. After and that him. causes the headache? Yes, they say that causes the headache. Uh, okay. Now, she's, she's, uh, the kid is now on continuous treatment, you said? Yes, he is. Uh, what exactly? Um, at the moment, he's, he's using the nasal spray. Okay, nasal spray? Yeah. Nasal spray, what else? That's all. That's all? Yeah. But the headaches keep, keep coming back. I they can see my, my professor they, is shaking his head. They go away, another month they come back. Okay. Well, listen, we are trained at medical school and we took an oath. We don't criticize our colleagues because, you know, sitting here, it is very easy to criticize because we are not in the situation, we don't see the patient, we don't have 20 other patients waiting in the queue and many other things that affect how people and how our colleagues charge and manage patients out there. But I think Dr. Girish Moja seems to think that the patient should be treated a little bit different to what has been the case. But first, let's start with a four-year-old, the doctor said, reportedly, cannot have a headache. Is that accurate? That's, that's not true. I think that's the first important thing, mm. that migraine can occur very early in life. I see. Very early. Okay. Uh, I think you, you will find that four-year-olds will start telling you they have headaches. Mm. And so that's about the age when we start seeing migraine. Okay. One of the types of migraine that you get in children, especially that age, four or five years old, it's called abdominal migraine. I see. And they get severe abdominal pain, which is a manifestation of the migraine. Okay. So, firstly, that's incorrect, that you can't get headaches in children that age. Now, will, 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 will allergy give a headache? As, as allergy, it is alleged? you see, it's an interesting one. You know, unless the allergy produced blocked nose, sinus problems, then I can explain, and that's why the response to the nasal neck spray. So there might have been an acute sinusitis that caused the headache. But if it repeatedly recurs, then the, the sinus thing and the allergy thing is just maybe a trigger or a red herring. So I think maybe the likelihood is that the eight-year-old Mampula's child probably has a migraine yeah. and has to be managed that way. Yeah. Now, at this eight-year-old, can she be treated by a pediatrician or she needs to see one of you guys? Eight or eighteen? Eight. Eight is pediatrician. Okay. So will do pediatricians yeah, normally yeah. be able to treat migraine? Or would you, would you take this child to a neurologist instead? My, my view would be a pediatrician should see the headache, the patient first, mm. and, and manage it. And if they can't, they can always call in a neurologist. After we five years, Mapule, Ngama no how me so a neurologist so they can properly investigate this issue and uh, exclude migraine and if they still suspect migraine let them put them on trial of treatment for migraine and let's see if this child is going to improve because if you don't deal with this this child's scholastic performance is going to be negatively affected we'll continue our discussion on treatment of headaches after the break you stay with us Welcome back. My name is Rosato Lapelaka. I'm from Salisa Timona Bonita Sounds Call with SABC2. The Nano Luigi Sezang. Now, quickly, Dr. Shevel, yes. we have agreed that uh, the conventional treatment of migraine and management of migraine is mm. what Professor Modi has outlined: prevention yes. and dealing with the acute headache itself, and the treatment and all the other things, Brilliant. and also ensuring that in the treatment thereof we avoid what we call the rebound headache, putting people on medication which, when they stop, will give rise to a headache. 
Now, you've done a lot of work, controversial work, I might say. Uh, some of it is still undergoing research, including the surgery that you described. How, 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 how successful has this been, and, and how, what is the take, uptake? Because I see also in Britain, the, the surgical method of, of treating migraine and all these things is also beginning to take, take root, but there's still a lot of controversies. Some medical aids refusing to pay for your treatment. Where are you? Well, first of all, whenever there are advances in medicine, mm. you can be 100% sure there's going to be controversy for a long time. Yeah. Now, as Professor Modi pointed out, uh, there are certain accepted treatments for migraine. And one of them, he said, if the ordinary painkillers don't work, you go on to the triptans. Mm. But even Professor Modi will agree that not everybody responds to the triptans. Mm. So there are people who, no matter what medication you give them no matter what migraine preventative medication you give them they do not respond and these are the people who benefit from these the are the people we okay. don't operate on just mm. willy-nilly on people mm. we operate on people who we have been proven mm. to have a particular thing okay. and who we know will respond That's to fine. the treatment we'll spend more time on that next time i've sent some patients to you and they said you give them injections what did you give them what injections? Look, occipital nerve blocks. Mm. That's now. You give injections in the head. Not in the head. Why do you give in, it? In, in, at the base oh, of that's the head. head. Okay, that's <laughs> right. <It's a> neck. <laughs> okay. It's an accepted way of breaking the headache cycle. Okay. There are certain accepted ways in the sense when we say accepted, mm. and, and we're not being any uh, disrespect to Dr. Shevel, mm. but accepted in the sense that there are trials, placebo-controlled, double-blind controlled trials. Mm that confirm benefit. Okay. That's the important thing for us. Mm. Now the occipital nerve blocks, uh, Botox is still very controversial mm. because the trials have shown benefit and no benefit. Okay. So it's an area which I think still needs to evolve mm. uh, where people are given these injections into their trigger points, into the sites where you can break the cycle. You see, it comes back to what I was saying. You've got to break the headache cycle. Without doing that, you have no benefit. Okay. Gaff.